Hey everybody, Anthony here and thanks for watching Crystal Miner Rocks. Today I'm in the lab, it's DIY day. A couple weeks ago I cut a small batch of baker egg agates, some were really pretty. I was going to have somebody polish them but uh, I was thinking you know it would be a lot more meaningful if I did it myself, it's a lot more pride. Um, so it turns out I have no lapidary skills or uh, hardware so I'm going to be learning a bit. Decided to uh, look up some videos on some DIY stuff, got some ideas and decided to just you know come up with uh, you know my own flair. I love to make things. Uh, anyway the bug just would not leave my head. I just kept designing and churning things out and eventually just something pretty cool came out. So check it out. Convertible flat lap grinder 1000. Hey, hey now that my hands are free I can show you how this guy converts to the desktop mode. First thing I do is uh, of course, you know, you take out the uh, sanding wheel and then remove the water tank. Then the water pan, which just lifts right out. Be very careful with the nipple right here. I've already taken out the two nuts that are securing this, so they just come right out now. I drop them in, I drop them in front of the post and then you can drop this whole thing down. Make sure the uh, drop down legs are square to the floor and secure. There it is. Convertible flat lap grinder 1000. Now that it's horizontal again, I might uh, use this for a grinder or something else, who knows, the experiment continues. Um, depending on if it vibrates too much or whatever, you know, based on what happens, I may add a, a third support uh, leg there, just kind of slips on, a cl uh, clips in, and uh, we'll just see what happens when I start messing with it some more. Here's the one minute tour. Got my basic water tank, uh, metal wire just wrapped around the top, uh, attached to a C-channel aluminum. Then there is the uh, watertight gland there with uh, the drip line going into the um, flow control valve. This is to guide the uh, tubing into the uh, drip line and the drip pan. Uh, right angle braces. For the top part here, I did add a small uh, 5 8 inch uh, diameter uh, washer and then a nylon washer to raise up the, the whole disc platform. A good old bench grinder with the potentiometer, uh, variable speed. Uh, this is uh, to be determined, this area. Larger right angle braces to support the whole platform. This whole thing can also come off my uh, metal step stool. Um, I got some quarter 20 uh, with wing nuts, so I got four of them right there and they can come off quickly and easy and this whole thing can come off. Then I've got some uh, right angle here. Um, 516 so on a nylock and there's a held in place by another 516 bolt on the other side comes right off like that and then uh, I've got some Mongo uh, hinges here I think these are commercial ones uh, for the swing more uh, just right angles aluminum This is the uh, water containment. Uh, it's an angel food cake pan with the cone uh, cut out. Underneath I've got some uh, flat headed uh, screws that are glued in the proper positioning. I've got a water valve adapter right there for the drain. Let's see if I can get it on here with one hand for you guys. Okay, so it's dropped in place, steady. What you see there is the original uh, grinding wheel that came with the uh, uh, bench grinder and I'm going to use that as the back support. It looks flat enough. If it's an issue, I'll change it. So uh, then you place your uh, grinding disc of choice. Here's the original washer that it came with. I'm going to try to get more grinding uh, polishing surface area, so I've reduced it to a one and three quarter inch one that I got from uh, Home Depot. Then you nut it all up. And that's basically the setup, then you take the, uh, the drip line and you know, placing it in this guy, easy to flex and move out of the way. You can cut another one, make it longer or shorter. And then on the back side, I've got some uh, wire guides, some quick release ones right here. I can just pull this out and then it drops out. Stick it back in. So 
So you got power and uh, drip line coming down, and uh, this will go into the uh, the catch bin. Okay, so first I want to say that these aluminum parts that you see here, like the C channel and the right angle braces here, um, I already had, so you know from previous projects. So I don't really have a cost for you. Um, but you know it doesn't have to be aluminum it could be steel scrap steel even wood I mean you just got to be creative um, and it doesn't have to cost a lot so I'm not sure maybe 30 bucks or so if you were to get aluminum um, then there's a bin um, I did buy this for seven dollars this is a flow control angel food uh, cake pan um, this I'm not gonna count because you need this but you know maybe buy one for 12 bucks each of them seem to be about uh, 10 to 12 bucks each for the sanding disc so this is a uh, 17 uh, the big expense was the bench grinder. Um, it cost $130. I got it on sale for $106 at Walmart. So <laughs> this was a good steal. Originally, I was going to go with the Home Depot, uh, not Home Depot, um, Harbor Freight one for $150, which also had the uh, potentiometer. Uh, but this was $106, man. This is great. Um, then I got some corner braces. This is a 10 inch one right here, uh, 8 inch. I actually already had them for many years, decided to use them. Perfect. Finally got some use out of it. I think they're about nine bucks a piece. I looked it up average. So in all, just this top section right here is like 170. Uh, you got to account for some hardware, um, you know, nuts, bolts, washers, wing nuts. Um, so I figured that's 30-ish, you know, to, unless you already have all this. You know, again, I had all of this. So you're at basically about 200 bucks for most of everything is here for the top part. Um, it doesn't have to sit on this uh, metal bench. Um, which I love the way it looks, so I, I had no problem spending the 40 bucks for it. Uh, That's a Harbor Freight piece, and uh, it's removable, of course. So, you know, 250 if you're looking at everything here, but uh, you know, that, that platform is not the flat lap, so you could put it on a wooden crate or a box or whatever, or mount it to your workbench. So, that's still it. So, that's still two, under $200. Um, I'm guessing if you absolutely had zero items and nothing, it might cost you 250 to 300 for if you have to just get everything. Um, these are some really nice 30 hinges that I had from before. Um, you know, again, you can get a used one from a dead door somewhere. Uh, just got to be creative. Got some bolts and these right angles. So lots of fun, man. Just racking my brains about how I can reuse and recycle. That's a great project. As you can see in my implementation here, I've got only two pieces of wood. But what was very important is that it had to be super straight and flat. Um, I got lots of scrap wood I get from everywhere else, but uh, in this case, I went to Home Depot, went to their uh, scrap section, the cull bin, and found a couple of pieces and laid them on the floor there just to make sure that they didn't warp or bend. And that's how you can tell. So I got uh, two pieces and one worked out really well. I cut it to the size I need. And again, just being resourceful and uh, getting some, uh, some cheap wood that works. About a month ago, I saw a couple of videos just to get an idea as to what's what and you know, how they look like. And uh, there was even one, I think, using a drill press as the flat lap, so that was kind of cool. Uh, but the one thing that I kind of saw in commonality was they're large and they're bulky. And I've got a space issue. Um, so from those videos, there's only one thing that I really did a takeaway from that, that I wanted to use in my build and that was this guy so it's an important note if you're gonna make it the way uh, I've done it so this uh, angel food cake uh, pan was I saw this in a video by Rustane art studio so thank you very much for suggesting that I, I think it's a perfect uh, you know part for the you know function and it's got a vertical side this one here it happens to have a three inch opening which is very important because this flips fits right over the uh, original washer that came with the grinder, which is 2.75 inch. The first cake pan I bought had the slanted sides, which a lot of them had, but they don't spec out how big the inside opening is, so I didn't realize it was going to be a problem until I bought it. Uh, so this will not, this will fit in it, but the first one did not. So just make sure you buy one that's got straight sides like this. I will put it in the description where I bought it, uh, which one it is, in case you guys do actually want to do it. If not, you can resize the washer down to something smaller. Um, at the time of the bill, I didn't want to change any parts. I just want to keep things the way they were because I didn't know if it would affect stability or the rotation or whatever. Because you know, I had done it, done this before. Um, so anyway, uh, anyway, this is what I ended up with. This will help. Very important. And it's raining again. Uh, it is Florida, <laughs> but the show's got to go on.
Okay, the last couple of tips for y'all. Um, I did build this to be modular and compact and in most cases toolless. However, because this is removable, it's gonna be loose and you will need to tighten it down to bring, keep your hexa around because uh, this thing will rattle a bit. This uh, bench grinder is uh, 2,000 to 3,400 RPM, so this thing's gonna get going depending on what speed you, uh, you have it at. So my drop down legs also are, are loose, as you see, because they have to swivel down. But that can be overcome with something like a large binder clip um, or one of these guys, a little, you know, a little grip clamp there. So I'm just going to use two of these to hold it down and it does the, does the job in my test so far. Uh, the rattle goes away pretty good. Um, as for this area, stay tuned for video number two when I basically do some mods to this guy. And also when it flips down to desktop mode, uh, I've got something else in mind as well for polishing. And then I most likely will change this to where I don't have to uh, use this, uh, you know, to tighten it down. So I'm going to go tool this. So stay tuned for all that. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great one. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching. And as always, your continued support. Um, find me on Facebook, Crystal Miner Rocks. If you've actually made something and have inspired you, man, I would love to see a picture. Share it. Uh, don't forget to leave a comment. If you have some suggestions, if you like the video or not, I'd appreciate it. Uh, coming up next will be the uh, build note, so if you're going to actually make my convertible flat lap, continue watching. Till the next time. Got the hinges already put on uh, as a template. As you can see, the uh, backboard can now flip up and I'm planning to just uh, secure this vertically and you know, mount it to the baseboard so that uh, this guy can stand up. There's the hinge. Got a couple of screws right there just to hold it in place to size and measure everything up. Washers underneath here just to level that up. There's a one inch piece of uh, just scrap wood to keep it vertical from flipping over. I decided to use these uh, 10 inch uh, right angle brackets from uh, Home Depot. Uh, I did have to work them straight a little bit on the vise and eventually they're going to basically uh, be you know, strapped down nice and tight, pulling my backboard uh, uh, super straight and to the point where you know, this guy's gonna be level. Can't do it with uh, one hand holding the camera, but this guy will be level when it gets all mounted and tightened down. Here are my hinges. Uh, these are uh, number 12 uh, screws. I did cut them back a bit, just so I can get them in the right size. Held up with some washers to keep them even. Uh, might be a good idea to make sure you're using a level or something else to make sure they're perfectly flat so they'll hinge right. Um, right now I'm just using set screws to hold them in place while I size everything up before I lock it all down. So I'm planning to take this and probably paint it after it's all in place. So I'm just going to pre-drill everything, get it in place. These are quarter 20 uh, flathead screws that came with the uh, hinge and um, they're a little too short for me to use, you know, the bolt on the end. Uh, but instead of, you know, spending more money on hardware, I just make sure I, when I Pre drill these holes are going to be smaller than the uh, quarter 20. And then when I hand tighten these guys, they are really snug. So they're not wood screws, but they did bite into the wood really well. That's why I'm only going to use like two when I prep all this up and then uh, leaving at least two. Because if you keep uh, taking these screws in and out, they will kind of eat out the, uh, the, the wood, uh, won't bite in as much. So I will make sure I have at least two that are nice and solid. Uh, same with these guys right here, even though these are uh, number eight, 12 screws. Um, but uh, yeah, that's a good point on reusing these. Just watch the spacing at the edge. That's why I decided to put a little gap right here. And uh, this way the last bolt that uh, passed through, if I decided to change it to a bolt, uh, will not get in the way of my braces right here. So maybe if I need to shore it up later, if needed. Got both my uh, right angles set in place. It is actually pushing a bit more to the uh, right side away from the grinder so all the weight's going to be on the left side when it when it uh, gets mounted so i'm pushing to the left so this is against the brace so it is level now so keep in mind you want it when it's not uh, uh you know 
but the, when the grinder's not on there to be kind of floating to the right so that when you push left it's centered or as centered as possible. That's the plan at least. So I'm going to lock this guy in place. Uh, this is exactly where I want it to be. I'm going to reuse these uh, hinge screws since they seem to be doing a good job. Uh, the only one I want to be 100% sure do not move is this guy and I drilled out the hole a bit bigger. I'm going to do a, a pass through bolt from underneath with a nylock and so this guy be nice and solid. So I uh, had to drill out that hole a bit bigger and slid it out of the way, continue to make that hole right there. So let's get this guy put together. Okay, the bolts are on nice and tight. Had to clean everything off just to you know, flip it upside down. So here's the sh platform. And I um, decided to put my uh, wing nuts back on. These are the pass-through bolts that secures the rig to my work uh, to my metal step stool. So this will keep the uh, rig from sliding left and right. Uh, two is enough. Um, I have room to do a third if I need it. I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen here yet or how busy it's going to be. But uh, I'll do a third if I need to. But I think two is enough. I've cut my uh, support leg to the height I believe I need. Got the level out. Give me my support right angle. I made a tiny uh, hole there just so I can mark the uh, spot. And then we get the uh, platform level. And that's where we're gonna mark it and we're gonna drill and make that, uh, that hinge. This right side safety latch is just in the way of everything. I thought I could make it work with it somehow, but it's just all. <laughs> It's just in a way. I'm gonna have to get a post in here, so this guy's gotta go. Okay, it's gone. Uh, this spot right here is hollow, which is exactly where I wanted to be. So I'm gonna put my uh, 5 16 bolt. This spot right here, just punch it down. Tiny problem, uh, this guy's coming in at an angle. Uh, that's because this portion uh, I didn't realize was a fat hollow tube behind it. So even though this is a blank space, I should have been drilling more towards like right here. Um, because I'm using a hex head and that's the, the side of the head is uh, hitting the sidewall. I'm just right there. So I um, just need to, on the other side, I'll go a little bit more closer to the left. Problem solved. Uh, this was where the grommet was the, for the safety latch and I uh, took a bit, but I was able to drill it out and knock it out. And so now I'm using that space for the uh, post here. So perfect. All right, so the back support is now uh, bolted in temporarily just so that it's sized up. Then I got my, I took my right angle, uh, drilled through two pass-through holes just so I can fasten this to the uh, this uh, board, the backboard, and then uh, everything's in place. Okay, after all that, it is done. Leg number one, um, it's level. So pretty much how it's going to work is when I'm not using it on the bench, I can flip it up. This guy will just uh, hang there, and then uh, this is the back support and go in my post. I'm gonna put a nut just to keep it in place. And then here, this, uh, this nut will be changed to a nylock so that it'll be loose, but it will never come off. So it's got that nylon threading inside. So I'll change this to a nylock. And this is the first backstop. Both the uh, stabilizer legs are on now. I am realizing this is flexing a bit more because I need this thing held down. So two more holes coming up. I'll need to uh, get two more wing nuts put in there just like these guys right there. Just to make it nice and solid, just in case. This part's going to be a bit tricky because underneath the bench is a lot of uh, seam lines and uh, grooves. So I don't want the hex set to rest on one of those. But I want this part to look even, so I'm going to do my best. Had I known beforehand, I would have drilled these out earlier. <laughs> so now I'm going to work on the uh, drip pan. The uh, After removing the assemblage and the grinding wheel, you will find three um, you know screw holes here so I took the opportunity to take this flat bar just attached it with the existing holes and I know it's going to be straight and uh, it's going to simulate the bottom of the um, drip pan so I'm going to now position my right shorter right angles and make sure it's, it's just super flat exactly the way it's supposed to be so that when I take my uh, drip pan it's just going to rest right on it just like uh, this guy here that's the uh, plan right now. Just a note, I'm not sure if it's gonna affect anything, but thinking ahead, um, I'm gonna make sure there's a gap, just you know, one eighth or a quarter inch, uh, so that this guy's not touching the uh, right angle in case there's some excessive vibration. I don't know how this thing's gonna go when it's done, but uh, just um, I'm just making sure it's not touching. Then, then I'm gonna size up the holes and secure this guy. 
Sometimes it's a challenge to get a you know drill bit to get precisely in the spot you need it to, even after you've marked it. So um, I actually do use my uh, a metal punch here just to get it right in that spot where it's supposed to be. Hit that, put a little divot, and then you know use a small uh, drill bit to pre-drill that hole, and then um, then I continue on with like the screws I'm using. These are number eight uh, three quarters. So that's how I get these guys to really be in the right spot that they're supposed to be when I mark it off. And uh, now these guys are in place. I'm gonna flip it up and uh, put the uh, the pan on. Okay, the grinder is back upright. Stabilizer arms are locked in place. And you know, this is pretty much what I was envisioning. Got the, uh, the pan resting on the arms and uh, partly the uh, grinder as well. So, and I just gotta find a way to attach it so that it doesn't wobble around. So this is what I'm thinking right now. I found these uh, flat headed screws, short. Um, these arms already have uh, pre-drill holes, of course, uh, from this thing. So uh, I've set the screws in place and I'm planning to like use super glue. Uh, once this guy's right in the center right there, this pan is making contact with uh, three of the spots. I'm gonna do at least two minimum. And uh, that way after it's glued, when I lift the pan up and put it down, it's just gonna stay in place right over the center. That's the plan. Turns out this uh, cake pan uh, is not flat. It's not really meant to be actually, but it's, it was a challenge. I kept spinning it around until I found that same spot again where it was uh, touching the screws on all three sides and it's still centered. So I marked it with some tape. Um, this way I can clean that spot underneath with uh, alcohol just to make sure that you know, hopefully this glue will work. I'm gonna give it a try anyway. But that's a challenge, it's not flat. I was going for super glue, but uh, I had this some of this around left, and um, it's a gel, so it turns out it worked out pretty good. Instead of it uh, running all over the place, I just kind of goop it in there into the uh, this hole for the flathead, I mean, put a Phillips head in, and just kind of took the rest off of my pinky. Uh, instead of running around, it was uh, sitting in place pretty well. So I'm gonna find out if this is a kind of hole or not. If it doesn't work out, I'm just gonna knock it off or cut it off, or buy another pan. <laughs> Okay, it's been about 30 minutes and I was keeping some pressure on it a little bit, but it's doing pretty good as I did it one at a time. And that's how it looks like. And I'm probably gonna add a little bit more, goop it along the edge just, to, just for good measure. Why not? I decided to go 5 eighths for now and uh, marked it off all around with dotted lines on a, using a marker. And I'm gonna start cutting. Hope you guys can see, uh, it's working out pretty good. I've got a, uh, the pan on this uh, slanted uh, two by fours here, so it's just kind of rolling as I turn it steadily. And then I'm hitting it with the uh, good old Dremel. Holding it in place as I just turn it. Woohoo, that wasn't too bad actually. It's cut off, got me a cone there. Now I'll do uh, buff out the uh, sharps there. Okay, I've just assembled everything. Um, I do have the original grinding wheel below it as a, a base plate. And, um, you know, here's my first sanding disc. I did make one modification. Uh, after looking at the height of where I've had I cut the inside uh, cone down, um, I felt like it was totally had enough space, so I was able to remove one washer. Uh, which is great because you know it added like this got raised up uh, maybe I don't know a sixteenth uh, from the grinding disc, so now I still have a, a lot of threading left on the uh, on this post, so everything's locked down tight, and let's fire it up. It lives! It lives! the pan's not rattling as much as I uh, thought so that's great let's see where I've got it set at yeah it's not bad and everything is just hand tightened so uh, we'll see how much noise is left after it is the final build okay I just took the um, uh, the disc and everything out and um, I did some level measurements and the pan is actually tilting towards the back a little bit and very level left to right um, as I'm facing it so I'm gonna put a little water to see where 
the flow is going to be. And this way I'll know um, where to make that drain nipple. Let's go all the way. Okay. So it definitely looks like it's towards the back. That's what the level was saying. So I've got to put the nipple in the back corner. Just drill a hole and glue it. Picked up this uh, valve adapter from Lowe's um, mainly because it has a flat end right there. So I didn't have to deal with trying to grind it or straighten it out or something. Uh, I think I'm going to put it right there just in front of the support. Uh, another good spot is right here, but it's a little tight in case something goes wrong. So I'm going to have a little bit more more give if something goes, <laughs> goes awry. That's kind of the part where I wasn't sure how this is going to work draining wise, but uh, that's why I saved it till the end. Use my right angle to find out where it is roughly and then mark that spot there. It's pretty close to where the, the biggest dip is, but it's, it's close enough. Next is the water tank. I'm going to go with a kind of a slotted post system that I can take on and off. Uh, got a C channel, thin one, and uh, just kind of measure it out. No particular measurements, uh, just eyeball and then uh, marked it up level. Pre drill some holes and I'm going to make the slots now. Water tank's going to hang out the top somehow. Okay, I'm done. Not gonna lie, that was a total pain in the ass. <laughs> you know, in your mind, you always think, yeah, it's easy enough to do, make some slotted holes. First attempt, it was just a total train wreck. It <laughs> got a little better. And then um, this one, I had to size it up in shape, so not too bad. And then finally, like the, the fourth one, perfect right there. So uh, just, man, that took a while. Anyway, it's supposed to go like this. It's kind of hard to do with one hand, uh, but I will try. And then it slots down, holds it in place, and then the tank's on top. And uh, that's at least what I had in mind. And then if you guys want to do the same thing, just take your time and maybe, you know, just draw it all out. Uh, or find something similar or just screw a piece of wood to it and be done with it. But I want something that I can take apart and just uh, take it on and off easy. I'm using uh, 3 quarter inch number 10 uh, sheet metal screws. They're a pan head, so they got a pretty wide, uh, you know, surface right there for, the, for my post to... Uh, slot against. This is my water tank. I uh, did a simple wire twist with a hook. That's how I'm going to go for now. Um, the bottom right there. Got me in my unibit. I'm going to punch a hole right there on the flat portion. And then I'm going to add my uh, gland. It's a watertight nipple here. Uh, it does have a little watertight grommet right there. Half inch knockout. Make a tight connection, hand thread the rest, make sure it's nice and snug. And there it is. All right, I hope you guys can see this. Uh, I realized the tank was a bit too big, and but I didn't want to uh, raise or reposition the post, so I just cut the wire back to raise it up. And then uh, I added my flow control, short piece there, and then another little pigtail. Now I just have to figure out how to kind of position this and get it to stay. Now that I know where everything's going to go. So the drip line's got to stay in place, uh, and, but have some, you know, flexibility. I was thinking first, just use a wire, get it in place and move it around. Then I was thinking this, control the head, but that's kind of a little bit rigid. So then the last thing I came up with, which I think will work just fine, uh, some hanger strapping, which I happen to have some left of. Perfect. Flexible, can bend, easy, and it even has some holes. The last big one right here, I just have to drill out a little bit to get the uh, tubing to go through there, but this will, I think, work perfectly. I did have to make the last hole a little bigger so that the uh, one quarter inch uh, tubing can go through it. So I put on a vise and then I held it back with the uh, screwdriver while I use a really sharp bit to just get that hole a little bit bigger. Now it's uh, good to go. All right, here it looks. Okay, this is how it looks like. I think this is the perfect device for this thing. Um, it's flexible enough for me to move it around. It's not really in the way. Bends easy, twist it and whatnot. So that's kind of what I'm missing. And then with the uh, bigger hole I just made, I can just, you know, at the tip, just control it. Control the direction I want, and it's rigid and make it longer and shorter. Just cut it to the length you want, and that will do it. Problem solved. Got some measurements for your uh, grinder position. Uh, this vertical piece is going to be two feet uh, tall 
and the grinder uh, just arbitrarily I just placed it there it's seven and a quarter is where mine is at and uh, remember this is a uh, scrap piece of wood so it is what it is and it turns out it is uh, just shy of a foot and it's uh, 11 and 7 eighths so you guys will probably want to make it even and then I just placed it uh, you know evenly between the front and back for the base uh, I did just under 18 inches uh, no particular reason I think that's just where I ended up cutting it um, and of course this is still the same scrap piece of wood so it's uh, 11 and uh, 7 eighths um, you'll notice that it is not centered over the uh, entire top of the uh, step stool I'm not sure why I did it that way um, maybe more I just wanted to lean the, uh, the whole platform a bit more to the left after I had already cut it so I mean I don't know that it's gonna make an issue if it's fully centered for you guys so take your pick but that's just how mine ended up and then the um, right angle I think I uh, yeah I did it at like 13 inches 13 and a quarter so 13 and a quarter for where the uh, platform hits it and then this guy's this one is where mine ends ended up but yours will be where you size it up okay so Mine ended up being like a seven and a, about seven inches. No, no, that's, that's, it's hard to do with one hand. Seven and a quarter as well. But you want to size this up level and then bring this to touch it as I did in the video. Okay, I did the uh, water drain test from the jug. I did have to squeeze that down a bit more, just super tight. Um, no more drips, unexpected. Everything looks in place. Can't really think of anything else I need to do. Um, I think it's just time to break it down and paint it. Shut up and sit down.